Hi, my name is Tracy, and today I will be teaching you a classic short round layer. The two techniques that I will be focusing on is elevation and over direction. Okay, so for this haircut, I'm gonna start with a pie-shaped subsection, starting in the top of the haircut. So generally, your starting point is going to be your shortest point. So I'm working with a round shape, coming in and elevating the hair off the head shape at 90 degrees. So my finger angle is very important as well. I wanna ensure that I keep that sort of rounded cutting line throughout the entire haircut. Moving on to section two. And realistically in this first quadrant, I wanna ensure that my subsections are all fairly the, around the same size. So in this first quadrant, I'm probably gonna take about three or four pie-shaped sections. My over direction is into my previous guideline. So it is a traveling guideline. So I wanna ensure that with my new subsection, I'm combing the hair, in this case, where my body is standing, away from my body and into my previous subsection. And what I'm sort of visualizing is this rounded cutting line. If the hair was to be elevated right off of the head shape, so you can start to see that rounded line. And then moving into my next section, so there's my guide coming in, cutting over the finger. So this is a part of the haircut where my finger position and my body position are gonna change. If you've noticed, I've been working in sort of the upper portions of the head. When I'm working in the upper portions of the head, I need to ensure that I'm cutting over the finger because it's going to be easiest for my body and for my hand position. Once I start coming into the lower portions of the head, I do need to ensure that I change my body, so where I'm standing, as well as how I'm holding the hair. So I'm kind of at that sweet spot right now where I'm at the parietal ridge, so I'm kind of in between where the round of the head is and going into the lower portions. So I, I can still cut one more section over the finger. As I move to cutting palm to palm, I'm now gonna change my body. So I'm now standing in front and I'm gonna be cutting on the inside of my hand. It is, I would say, one of the more challenging shapes because it is such a fluid cutting line that you're trying to create. Oftentimes when I'm cutting a short round layer, I do wanna go through and I, I always wanna cross check my work. So how I will uh, achieve that is I wanna take a section that's opposite my cutting sections. So you can see there's a little bit of inconsistency there. So I could go through and, you know, refine that in my cross check. So moving on to side two, I'm gonna come through with a pie shaped section again. So I'm gonna elevate the hair again up to 90 degrees. Ensure that my finger angle is creating and mimicking sort of the head shape so that I can maintain my 90 degrees off of the head shape. So my over direction is now towards my body. I'm over directing the hair into my previous subsection, which is creating that round shape. If I maintain more of a stationary over direction, I would probably get something that's gonna be more kind of mullety or almost like bell-like will I have way too much length sort of maintained towards the back. I now am again at that point where I'm going to be changing my body position and I'm going to be changing my cutting angle as well when I get into the lower portions of the head. So where I stand is important. So I'm gonna be standing in front on this side, over directing the hair forward, coming in, and then transitioning to cutting in the lower portions of the head where my finger is now palm to palm. Okay, so now that the front is completed, you can kind of see that you're getting this really nice sort of shaggy 
rounded shape. I think it looks quite nice on her face shape. We'll go through and refine that fringe afterwards. Moving on into the back, uh, I am gonna sort of dampen her hair with a little bit of the Brilliant Damage Control, just to kind of give me a little bit more ease in terms of like sectioning and sort of combing through her hair. So as I move through the back, again, I've been cutting over the finger for the upper portions of the head. I'm now gonna move into cutting palm to palm. I think one of the, thing, the hardest things about a round shape is controlling that over direction and making sure that you are just combing the hair into your previous subsection. And then as I move through the nape, my finger angle is slightly changing, right? I'm not gonna keep it really flat. If I keep my finger very flat to the head shape, I'll get something a little bit more mullety again. You know, it will maintain a little bit too much length towards the bottom. So I need to come through and think about my finger angle coming right off of that round of the head. So it is slightly, it could look slightly graduated. But if we're thinking about the head shape and it being 90 degrees off of the head shape, my finger does sort of come in slightly there. Layers are shorter on the top and longer at the bottom. So this will create a lot of movement for her. It's also gonna remove a, lot, a little bit more weight. So you can see, you got this really nice textured shake. I will come through and sort of refine that perimeter afterwards. We haven't gone through and done our outline. Moving into my last panel here, I'm gonna take a pie shape section, over directing and combing hair towards my body, moving into cutting palm to palm. And now on this side, it's more my fingertips that I'm kind of starting to think about where they're gonna line up. So as I get closer to the nape, maintaining that 90 degrees from the head shape, and my fingertips are kind of lining up to the opposite side of the nape, or sometimes I'll use the chair. And I think too, like with subsections and sectioning, it's really important to make sure that you can see where you're going. So as I move to this last section, I'm not looking for it to like cross over or anything because I'm using forward over direction. I will have a little bit of a point that happens in the, in the back here where my two sections connect. You can see I have a little tiny bit of a point. I have one hair here that I'll go back through and refine. So when I do find inconsistencies like this, right? I do wanna make sure that I go back the same way that I cut it, coming back through, and there we go, there it is. If I come across horizontally and I cut that hair, I'm now holding the hair at a completely different, uh, at a completely different subsection angle. So my subsection angles also distribute weight. So if I go through and I cut that at that same length, then I might get a little bit of a different end result. Okay, so this is the completed short round layer haircut. I'm gonna go ahead and style her with some of our B Curly style prep. And I'm also gonna use some of our Aveda Texture Tonic. These two products together will give her a really nice light hold, but it will also deliver a little bit of that really textured beachy feel. Okay, so I've completed the haircut and styling on Chloe. And as you can see, you get this really beautiful shape on her. I have a lot of clients coming in and asking for a shag haircut. And with the short round layer, I believe that, you know, you achieve that.